live from the underground strength slash learn to lift cert. Here we are. What's up, my man, Zach Evanesh? What's up, brother? This what is amazing. Up? So this is, um, I want to say right away is that <laughs> this has been the most fun. I'm sorry to all you learn to lift people out there, but I've had more fun at this cert than any cert in my life. So give yourselves a hand. Woo! The learn to lift listeners out in internet world are crying right now. They're upset. But um, as they know, I'm just a very <laughs> honest person. And so, I, you know, I'm going to say why. Let me explain myself. We're like Cheech and Chong. Yeah. I think we're crushing. Yeah. Without all the marijuana. Right. right. <laughs> well, not yet. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So, so like, um, it's just, I've learned stuff. Like, for example, um, you teaching those kettlebell thinning jerks. I found out I, su- I can snatch 290. But a forty-five pound dumbbell sucks. It's like throw. It's uh, what's the one thing we when we when we kind of gave the intro here? We said you got to be open-minded. Don't discriminate against the many ways that make you strong. Uh, and then uh, don't basically keep open mind because as you evolve or your body evolves and times of right. your life evolve from when you're a competitive athlete to then you're an adult, then you're injured. You you always have to change. So sometimes you don't use the training now, but maybe down the road you have to use it for somebody else or you've been right. injured, so you've got to implement it. So uh, it's pretty cool that they got a uh, the blend of that. I think this is the so far – I mean, I haven't done a, a – I used to do a two-day certification. I haven't done that for a while, and uh, it is just way better with you and I doing this together. I think a big yeah. missing link was – I obviously can't teach the Olympic lifts like you do the weight. I can't teach the kettlebell like you do, so it's perfect. Come on now. No, I, I mean, <laughs> I'll be the first to admit, like um, anyone that works out here with me, I'm not a kettlebell expert at all. We don't do, you know, kettlebell swings, what you're going to get maybe. So I've learned a lot about uh, kettlebells today, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, it's cool. I think we brought a lot, like um, a unique blend of things. Just It's just better. That's the bottom line. It it's was. better to have this kind of – the information with different uh, experiences that you and I have and bring it together makes it better. And uh, I think also I'll say this because um, a lot of questions while we had the break from, we just finished at four, it's like four forty right now. We had like a half hour outside. A lot of people were talking about, you know, they want to work with athletes. Coaches don't want to work with them. And uh, I posted something on Twitter a couple of days ago that if you want to succeed and just climb up in, in any oh, ladder. Um, <laughs> my bad. Just making sure it works. If you want to uh, make progress, you have to learn to work with people. You've got to uh, you've got to do team stuff. You can't do it all on your own. Um, and I think that's just like a testament. Like my certs, I feel like they're very good, but I honestly felt like there was always something missing. And I feel like we did a lot today and we still have half of tomorrow, which I think is going to crush. I know. Uh, well, now that I've experienced it, I could do a full weekend of this just cause it's so exciting to be in a cert where you're actually learning also, you know, like, and like, uh, it's also a lot of pressure off you to not have to like always be coming up with something to teach, but like you learn a little bit, then you teach a little bit. And then, you know, like, I feel like I should have paid for this cert too. Give me that money. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, man. We got to rock some questions here. Yeah, we're going to uh, open this up live. For, yes. Uh, for you guys, for everyone um, that's here, we have about, well, now we have I think 24 people. Maybe, 24 people like here right now. So we're going to take live questions. I'm about to post this live, too, on uh, Facebook. If you guys want to ask questions there, I'll try to answer those, too. Cool, yeah. Oh, we're live, like, not just live right now, but live we're, in the actual real world. We're live all over the world right now. That is amazing. Yeah. Technology. I know. I don't understand it, but we are. Give props to our to my boy Aaron Moore here. Uh, he's, like, tech master. Yeah. Aaron, what are you on Twitter? What's the – that they can follow you? Address in attack. So address, the letter in, and attack. Two Ds, right? Yes. Address and attack. Me. Aaron Moore, Tech Master. If you need to do a podcast or music, video editing, music, the you hear our podcast, my podcast, a little bit irregular, but Aaron hooks me up with the music. So let's rock some questions. Who wants to come uh, up to the first question? Uh, go to Aaron, take the mic, and uh, just speak loud and clear. 
Hands, hands, we'll go by hands. All right, here we go. Don't be chicken. All right, this is uh, basically on nutrition. With all the hype out there on uh, gluten-free, GMOs, um, organic, how do you keep it simple for your athletes and keep, uh, keep people from getting caught up in the bad diets? I just tell them to go to McDonald's. I mean, <laughs> you know what? With, with kids, I think, um, and Zach can, uh, you know, he can disagree or not, but kid with ki- the, the key with kids is getting them to eat it all. Like, um, start with, you know, are you eating breakfast? Are you at least eating three meals a day? That's step one. Like, don't get caught up, for heaven's sakes, with kids. Don't get caught up in gluten-free, uh, paleo. Like, they need to eat, number one. Because they're active like crazy, you know, they're playing sports, they're training with us. So step one, are they eating breakfast, are they eating lunch, are they eating dinner? Odds are they're skipping something. That's step one. Step two, now we're going to work up, you know, quality, making better choices, you know, um, maybe staying away from so. But i tell you what the simplest thing to do is, is have them carry a food journal. And then it puts um, a little bit of a little bit of the responsibility back on them. And so that, that will tell you who's your number one athlete. So the ones who carry the food journal, number one, that shows a lot. Number two, make one small correction every week, just one per week, not day, per week. Well, in a year's time, that's 52 changes to their diet. So that's what I would do with kids. But exactly. So this question was directed for kids, is that what, or just in general? In general. So uh, I'll just piggyback a little bit off what uh, Mash was saying. For our athletes, they when they sign up, they get a welcome packet and they get nutrition guidelines. Nothing super detailed because I'm not a nutritionist, but simple things uh, like Travis is saying. Way to keep us safe legally. Keep it safe legally. Yeah, yeah. I, I say uh, don't eat the school lunch unless they're going to like a prep school or a private school. They're, they're not getting a good – so I say you're going to now pack your lunch the night before – I tell them, just make like two turkey sandwiches, two tuna sandwiches, roast beef, something like that. Dr. Ken Leisner, you know, I don't know if it's true or not, but he used to say he used to send his son to school with, uh, I think it was 10 or 20 tuna sandwiches. And he said, rule is you don't come home with them and you can't give them away. You can't throw them away. So figure out how they're, how they're making it into your belly. So uh, I'd say you got to eat breakfast. And I tell him straight up. When they say, oh, I don't have time, I said, then you're not dedicated to really succeeding. Because if you want to do this, you're going to wake up 15 minutes early and you'll scramble two eggs or you'll make a bowl of oatmeal, you know, instant oatmeal. So simple stuff. Make your own breakfast, pack your own lunch, have something after school. Even if it's, uh, you know, a glass of chocolate milk and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. At their age, I'm not worried about all these things. And then for adults, I said this to somebody, I said, you know, my uh, nutrition never got more confusing until all the nutrition stuff. Are we allowed to curse on this thing? I try not to. We Maybe should. not. It we is won't. like fitness. Right. Faith gotcha, 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 gotcha. That's why I'm double checking with you. I man. might have made a few mistakes in my life. Cool. But. I won't. I will not curse. So I, in my, uh, and you probably will remember these times, probably around like 2002 or so, different, a lot of different nutrition fads came out. You had you started the the fasting the you know the paleo uh, eat more fat and I look back to the times where I felt the best and was the leanest was when I ate like a bodybuilder moderate protein moderate carbs low fat most of my carbs were after were breakfast and after workout otherwise lots of protein lots of veggies one salad a day eating frequently and then I started getting caught up in eat more fat, eat trail mix, blah, 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 like whatever, eat, you know, only eat almonds. And I just, my body, I think just went through too much craziness when I should have kept it simple, just the way training needs to be. E- eating like a bodybuilder, I think keeps it simple. You're eating chicken, steak, rice, fish, big potatoes, uh, all kinds of vegetables, oatmeal, whole eggs, egg whites, drinking, you know, simple stuff. And I think if we go back to that, I even hear when Rob Wolf gets interviewed, it sounds like he's kind of saying essentially have protein, have carbs, have carbs after a workout. He's not like eat more fats, have lots of bacon. I feel like that got a little carried away with it got crazy. And people, yeah. I think were like, all right, I'm going to have six strips of bacon, six, you know, whole eggs. I think that's okay. Maybe when you're a teenager for a little bit, right. You could get away with it. 
But I think if we go back to simple, clean, old school bodybuilding style. For real though, yeah. 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 You know, another thing too with, with you guys that might CrossFit, like, the, you know, getting it too strict, like um, it's not going to add up mathematically. Like you're not going to have the glycogen stores to be able to do like what a guy like, um, like you know, we have my man Will Hall in the house today who's a shout out to Will Hall. I mean, uh, everybody give Will Hall a hand for me. Will looks like a tank. Will Hall is a tank. He looks like a tank. He's a tank. I mean, you got to. He looks like he's about to run us over. That's a Look, grid guy, a CrossFit guy that can uh, snatch 157K, which is, what is that, 340, 345 pounds, right? Yeah, he can snatch 345. Meanwhile, he can like muscle up for days. I don't know. That's what dreams are made of. <laughs> yeah, Will's a freak. Like, I mean, like he's the one who literally tortured me as I was, you know, doing the grid stuff. But not, yeah, you know, he was just trying to get me in shape. But we had a lot of fun together. So. Well, we know what I always say. Like when somebody's like, "That person, that guy's a freak. That girl, <laughs> she's a freak when she's lifting. Look at the weights they're throwing around." I always say, "Yeah, they earned it. They worked for it. They did everything. They did the eating. They did yeah. the whole lifestyle, sleeping." They lifted hard. They dialed in the nutrition, yeah. the recovery. Um, yeah, so Will is definitely not. Out, you're definitely not strict paleo, are you? Will? No, like he eats very clean, but like Will works out like literally all day long. Like you know, you guys hear about Rich Froning. Will does the same thing. I mean, I've watched him do three workouts in a day easily. Like um, Will, come here really, really quick. Like for example, Will, how many times a day do you, do you train? Here comes Will Holly. I mean, how many times a day do you train? Uh, usually twice, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then really long sessions Tuesday, Saturday. Like what's a long session? Uh, between three and five hours. Three and five hours. So if that dude ate strict paleo, like he would fall out. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yeah, like you wouldn't have the energy store. How do you, uh, when, if you're training three hours, like are you having some energy drink in between i mean you sound like how do you how does a three-hour workout happen <laughs> uh just for me it might be different for a lot of people i always uh have some coffee beforehand um and then intra workout carbs is something that's really helped me out um something as simple as you know 64 ounces of gatorade throughout training uh actually mixing in some creatine with that gatorade has uh helped me out a lot as well um, and then usually around like the, the two hour mark or so, um, having some protein between 40 and 60 grams of that. So in that three hour training session, trying to get anywhere between 80 and hundred grams of carbs and 40 and 60 grams of protein. And a shout out to competitive, competitive edge performance. They sponsored the two of us. Um, nice. they really, they really, they sponsored the grid style training team. So, um, they keep us, I mean, I've got, they overdo it. They're the best sponsor I've ever had. Like I've got, I've got supplements. It looks like I'm running a, um, a, a supplement store at my house. What's their the competitive edge? Competitive edge. They're out of Wilmington, North Carolina, and uh, they're just awesome. Tony is the owner. Um, they're just what are they? Protein, carb supplements, and everything. Around? But it's really high grade. It's super. You know that really. You know they. You know the, the like the e essential fatty acids are like super really clean. You know, like hydrolyzed way and stuff too. Like, you, I mean, you so tell you're me. saying the salmon is not from the Jersey River? <laughs> no, definitely not from the Jersey River. So, uh, and the protein is super duper. Will can probably tell you more than I am, but um, yeah, they they really keep us energized. Don't you agree? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, supplementations uh, help me out a lot too. So. Yeah. So I told my wife this morning that um, I, I was going to tan. She's like, tan. I'm like, yeah. So I popped some vitamin D. I said, I just tanned. <laughs> you know, like, that's all I'm going to get, bro. Like, this white boy ain't tanning. So. But, um, you know, they're just awesome. So. Cool. Thanks, Will. Any other questions? I mean, I know there are. Next. Yes, let's take another question. <laughs> Man, this is Joe Gonzalez, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so I'm about to have a kid next month. Yeah. I know you just came out with a program to lower the time. Uh, how long are your workouts are going to take? Yeah, you saw that. Yeah, yeah. So with uh, you just now had a kid, and you have two? Two kids. Two yep. kids. What, uh, I, have you... I have two also. I have a daughter, right. Bailey, and I have a son, Rock. But Bailey's older, so she's no trouble. But Rock is young. Uh, Rock's a lot of work. I'm about to have a Rock. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Killian. He's not born yet, but yeah. He's um, on his way. Yes. He's baking. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, but my question is, is okay, as someone who's taken your program for a, almost or a year long, um, how, what to expect as a new dad? Like, well, 
number one, you're going to get less sleep for a while, and um, that's all right. So, but you have to take that into consideration. So, you're going to have to, you know, lower the volume because if you keep your volume the same or higher, and you don't recover, like it's not smart. It's not wise training because um, if you can't recover from your training, like really you're going backwards. So that makes training bad for you. Would you say just maintain? Just maintain uh, for a while? I mean, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't I either. Do not like I don't, I hate that, that freaks word. me out. Yes. So now I'm into like um, getting better. At Gain, something. Okay. So you're into gains. Okay. So like maybe <laughs> find it a time to just like get stronger. So like get your squat stronger. Very well. Like think, find something that you're not very good at, like your pull. Maybe your clean deadlift is not that good. So <laughs> focus on that and get something good accomplished. Right. I think um, one of the key things is uh, not to let it freak you out. So a lot of uh, new dads, that's like a big concern. And you know, we're having a baby. Like other dads are telling, oh, it's all over from there. It's going to be. But that's because they, they quit. Right. They get. They yeah. get. They give up. So what you want to do is embrace it and love it. It's really the best times. They're amazing times. And uh, just get a barbell in your house. Do you have? If you're if you don't have something set up at home. So if, if you always normally travel to a gym, go get a barbell, <clears throat> set it up, and that way you could deadlift, you could clean, you could do barbell row, you could snatch. And um, there's nothing wrong with sometimes, you know, doing a little bit of warming up and mobility, your baby's right near you, and then, you know, you're in the garage or wherever, and, and your baby's there, and, and uh, you're having a boy, you said, or you don't know, so you're having a boy, so... There's music going. I mean, you learn to uh, work out with kind of Barney uh, playing in the background. And <laughs> you, these things just, you know, you, you learn to do everything uh, with your family versus <clears throat> making it uh, one or the other. So I remember uh, when my uh, daughter was a baby on Saturdays, uh, my wife would work. She worked uh, as a nurse. So we got a jogger, and I would uh, wake up, feed my daughter, and then we'd go out for a run. And you know, I had the gym equipment in the garage at the time. So I think that you want to look at it as something that now will inspire you to be stronger. Having a, being a family man will inspire you to be stronger if you let it. Whereas, like Travis said, some people will quit and let circumstances such as being busier as a family person. Oh, I'm gonna, you know, I always say don't. Don't become like the other dads that are like, I used to be ripped like you, Joe, but then you wait till you see what happens when you have kids. Like they gave up because it got a little bit more challenging. But it's just an awesome time and it's going to, it'll, I think you'll get stronger because you'll be more motivated to be strong for your family. Whereas right now, maybe you're chasing a PR on the snatch. That's, you know, what I call like a surface goal. Now you're going to have this deeper meaning of being a father that, like, you want to be stronger for different reasons. When Travis did the uh, seminar at my gym, we did a mock weightlifting meet, and my son was there, and I was, like, so pumped up that he was there. I just wanted to, like, kill the weights. So use your children to inspire you to be stronger, and if you can, just, you know, get a barbell at the house and do stuff with your kid there. It'll be awesome. I, yeah. I totally agree. And, like, even, you know, I had to get ready – my son was born in October, and I started, you know, getting ready for the grid in in uh, December. So two months later, I'm like, you know, I, I decided to um, I was going to try out for this grid thing, and um, son or not, I had to get get right, you know. I st but I did not, and I will not, um, you know, um, cheat the time with my son and my wife. I, I will not, or my daughter. I, I'm going to do it all, you know. So, you know, you got to. You know, prioritize, no doubt. But like when I commit to something, I get it done. I find a way to like cut something out over here. And if you really look at your lives, and let's be, I want you all to look yourself in the mirror tonight and ask yourself, deep down, really, I mean, think about all the things you do. How much time do you waste? You know, like do you watch TV? You know, if you watch TV at all, and yet you're saying you don't have time to work out, you're lying to yourself. You know, if you, uh, lay around and don't do anything if you just are lazy if you sleep you know 12 hours like get your butt out of bed and go to work you know like we all waste time so if i want to do something in my lifetime i'm going to find that time you agree yeah i think uh being <clears throat> being a great father being a great family man now i don't want to also don't want to pretend like i'm great but uh i just applied the lessons and training 
to being a parent. So, you know, when you're tired and you're like, I don't want to lift, I'm just crushed, I feel like I don't want to do it. Sometimes you're tired, but your kid wants to be played with and, and uh, you know, you could just sit there and the baby cries or you just, you know, you do it. And I remember just when I was over uh, Travis's house last night eating dinner there, uh, his son was like all over the place. Uh, he's seven months now, right? Yeah, seven months. So uh, it just reminded me of, I remember like once my daughter woke up at like 5 a.m. She just wanted to play. She wasn't walking, but she would lay under this thing and like hit all the noisemakers and all that stuff. But I just applied the toughness to wrestling and to lifting and took it as a family man. And uh, it hit me when like we go to the beach and I'm in and out of the water with my kids. And then you see other parents, they don't want to even get off the chair. So use the dedication that you apply to training, and that would be called training for life. And then you'll be a great father. You'll do, you know, you'll do all the right things. Being a great father, if you care, you'll do all the right things. So the fact that you're wondering about it, like, you'll get it done. No doubt. You'll get it all done. Well, I know Joe really well. I know he will. I think, and the best times are ahead. So if somebody dared to say, oh, now it's all going to change, then just tell my no, it's going to change for the better. Is it hard? Absolutely. It's just different, but it's it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. And even when you work out in general, like, you know, if you're there two hours working out, look yourself in the mirror and say, was I working out two hours or was I just chilling at the gym two hours? Like Will. Yeah. Like Will. He's chilling out yeah. for like no, three no, hours. No, Will is Gatorade. like getting buck wild. <laughs> I, I worked out with Will. Like, he gets buck wild for three hours. Three hours. Yeah, he had the old man throwing up a lot. I told these dudes, like, when I started this grid style, like the first six weeks, I literally threw up multiple times every single week. I mean, Will has watched me go outside and puke everywhere. And so uh, he was a slave driver, but he also knew I had a short amount of time to get in shape. So had to happen that, you know, like I decided to do something, went full bore, you know, didn't work out with Carolina, unfortunately, but um, it wasn't because I didn't try. So right. my team didn't work out. So. Awesome. So you put, you went all in. Yeah. And that's it. Found that's time, you made time. Bye. And I just did it. Cool. Let's take another question. Here comes Carly. Carly's really a part of my family. So, um, Carly, what's up? So, you guys are arguably two of the best strength coaches in the country, maybe even the world. <laughs> you guys have lots of other friends. I agree friends. with you, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have lots of other friends who are also very successful strength and conditioning coaches. But now, now that you guys are doing these seminars, you guys are able to meet more of coaches like me who haven't had the experience, haven't necessarily had the time to get the success that you guys have. What is the number one quality that you see in all coaches, regardless of their experience level, that has that, what's what's that number one commonality that we all share that you guys consider makes the best coach? If you can't motivate people, you can't be successful. That's the bottom line. Martin Rooney said that. He he said that uh, we're in Florida. I think uh, genuinely caring. I mentioned that earlier, but uh, I'll, I'll kind of uh, reiterate and repeat it a bit for the podcast. When you genuinely care, you will do all the ethical things that need to be done to uh, create a success environment or you know create results for the people that you're training. So I think when you care, you're going to find your way to these seminars to learn more. When you care... You're going to dial in the programming. You're going to motivate people. You're going to communicate with them outside of the training. You're going to do things that build them beyond a better deadlift and a better bench press. And that's, you know, caring is the ticket. Um, But uh, I'll piggyback on on mass saying motivation because uh, it was like two or maybe three years ago, I held a certification and uh, one of the coaches said, man, I watch you coach. He's like, you're crazy. You're just bouncing off the walls. You're freaking out. He's like, I've been to other places, and uh, I'm not going to mention the coaches' names, but uh, they're very successful, and they're really just chill. He's like, they just things just kind of go on and happen there. They're just there, and the guys are working hard. The girls are working hard, whoever's training. And I said, wow. When he said that, I thought in the back of my mind, maybe I need to relax and just chill out. And uh, I tried to chill out, and I remember the first time I tried to chill out, I didn't feel like it was me. Oh, that would suck if you started chilling out. I wouldn't want to be around you anymore. It didn't feel right. (laughs) Right? You just can't fake who you are. So that didn't feel right. Uh, That was number one. It didn't feel right for me. So you got to be true to who you are. Yes. And then then I realized that 
a big reason why my athletes come to me is they love how fired up and how crazy we are. And they actually love how tough we are on them. So the, the right people will find their way to you. But I think if you care all the right things, you'll do the right things. Because if you don't care, that's when you start like, you know, showing up late or, you know, I don't know, not giving them all your effort when you're truly tired. And I tell my athletes, I go, you guys never know when I'm tired because I'm not like you where you're going to yawn and announce that you're tired, right? They come in, they're yawning and I freak out on them. I'm not going to curse yeah. on the barbell life here. But I freak out on them. Uh, but I say as a coach on a scale of one to 10, you want to give them a 20 and then yeah. you'll know that you're doing the right thing. You no just got to care. Genuinely care. Agreed. Great question. So, all right. Um, I want to know what are some things that you would look for if you're uh, buying a warehouse gym that's uh, for sale, what you'd be looking for, and uh, if the asking price is half of the, um, I guess, amount that was made in revenue that year, is that a good price? Or- uh, are, are you saying... Buying an existing gym. Yeah, an existing oh, warehouse oh, gym. That's a big difference. Sorry, like, in existence. Um, right. A commercial a, uh, gym oh, like or a, similar to this. Like this yeah. with a clientele. Yeah, so it'd be, they already, it's already an existing place. It, it's existing and they're making. Let's just say they're making like 100000 a year. And the, and the overhead is what? The overhead's about, it's a, after overhead, I would say 50000 they They're uh, probably 50000 Yeah. yeah. W- would and I buy it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, depending on what the asking price is. Yeah, but, if it's, let's say the asking price is 50000 Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would. I don't know what he'd do, but. That's an interesting question because uh, most people would probably say, no, I'm not going to buy it. I'll just I'll just train everybody. I'm, I'll start my own thing. And um, it is very difficult now uh, to, because there's so many gyms, it is much harder to start your own thing unless you truly have an understanding of how to uh, pre-market the gym before it's open to do, um, you know, like a founding price or a pre-sale price the way uh, commercial gyms do it. Um, So if you're going in, there's existing membership there, there's equipment in there, the members are on uh, contracts, then... uh, You do want to check that out. Is it... it, um you know, uh, a draft situation like electronic funds transfer. Now, if they're if they're saying they're paying in cash and they're telling you they made that, you know, definitely do your due diligence. But like, man, if they're prop, think about this. Do the math. If they're profiting fifty grand a year, and you take and you buy it for fifty thousand, and you spread that fifty thousand over the next five years, right away you're making money. There's not a gym owner on earth who started their gym profiting that much. So that's a no I brand. Have, uh, like, do you know this gym? I'll buy it right now. Like, yeah, yeah. You do? I mean, <laughs> He's like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to tell you. Oh, really? Yeah, it's in the uh, Raleigh area. Yeah. Really? Yeah. We'll, we'll talk after this. Yeah. If, that, if that's true, I would buy it right now. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. And uh, I guess that's it. Yeah. I, I would say, uh, I'll say this, though. Um, there, I've, I've got a buddy that uh, he knows. He's got four gyms two CrossFit and two are uh, like 24 hour chain gyms. And he has a unique process of what he does before opening the gym with a pre-sale so that when he does open the gym, um, there could be 40, 50, up to 80 something paying members That's ready great. to go. So understanding business is the ticket. So if you're going in on a business, you want to really do, uh, you want to see uh, pro- you want to see uh, membership, how it's been going for at least a year monthly you want to see when there's highs and lows you want to see yeah. if there's eft uh you want to know what kind of contracts the members are on uh, are they selling the gym when everybody's about to finish their 12th month and now they might go off and leave so uh do they have debt that they're not they telling debt. you about and sometimes uh members are so attached to the coaches that if those coaches leave they start you know questioning um oh, i might get out of here so there's you know I'll say this, that when you look at the numbers and all that stuff, you know, ask yourself, you know, and trust your gut instincts. Your gut will guide you and tell you, yes, this is a really good idea. You should go for it. And like 95% of the time, your gut instinct will be right. Here and there, 
you, you thought it was all good and then something happens. But as an entrepreneur, that is the really the way, you know, the way of the warriors. There are these tough times um, that will happen, but it's a profitable gym. I would look at at least the past year's revenue, broken down month to month, the EFT, how long the contracts are for the uh, members, and uh, what's going to happen with the coaches when you leave, how much are those coaches getting paid, and, um, you know, that's food for thought. The total flip side would be to start super small inside of a 500 square foot garage, um, but to n understand how to run a business because most coaches, they love coaching. And then they're like, oh, man, I didn't realize I was going to spend, spend all this time doing the business stuff. But you're, if you don't do the business stuff, you're not going to get to do the fun stuff very long. Yeah. You'll be broke. And your wife's going to be yelling at you, your husband or whoever. Yeah. So, yeah, next question. Next question. What do we got? <clears throat> what were the last three books that you've read? And uh, what book? Do you gift to others the most? I love, I love this question. That's a good one. I that mean, is a uh, great question. You you can go first. Cool. Um, man, and I have three books in the hotel. I'm right now reading uh, Winners Never Cheat, and uh, and then the subtitle is Even During Tough Times. That book is amazing. And I uh, just want to also say, uh, I'll go on Amazon and I'll always buy the used version if it's an older book. You get the books for a dollar, two dollars. I mean, it's amazing. So um, I'm reading that one. Uh, my buddy um, recommended a book to me that's really unique, um, uh, but it's um, it's on like going out in nature and using it as like meditation. And I'm gonna have to look at. It. I just started reading it. I think the author might be. Um, can we pull up Amazon on this or no? Or don't, uh, don't touch that. The thing will explode. Yeah, don't don't touch anything. Your seat will eject. I think the author's okay. name is Tom Ryan or Tom Brown, and I'll post a photo on my Instagram. Um, and then I'm constantly rereading uh, Turning Pro by Stephen Pressfield. I gifted that book. I gifted uh, another one. I gift that book a lot, Turning Pro. I gift uh, Do the Work. That's also Stephen Pressfield. Warrior Ethos I listen to over and over as well as Turning Pro on, on Audible. And I gift uh, Spartan Up, the book by my friend Joe DeSena. Uh, we got 50 of those books, and I've been gifting those to my athletes. So I like that book because people think that life is so hard or that they're going through these tough times. Then you read about these stories in Spartan Up, and as Joe says, it changes your frame of reference. And uh, Turning Pro is like a two-by-four smash to your face about telling you, this is what it takes to succeed. Do the work. Turning Pro, I think, is just an amazing book, even if people are not uh, business owners. Aaron? I'm just going to do a quick plug here for another podcast. Why don't we just pile them on? Um, Stephen Pressfield did a great uh, interview on the Spartan Up podcast, yes. which I also am the editor, so I guess I'm biased. But uh, check you. that out. He'll talk a lot about the book Turning Pro. He'll talk about uh, the War of Art. Uh, I believe War of Art is a really good Stephen one. Stephen Pressfield is really a must-have. And uh, what's interesting is, like Aaron said, he edits Spartan, uh, Spartan Up Podcast. I had read and listened to Steve's stuff, but then when they interviewed him, I was reignited with a different fire. Like, he makes you want to be better at everything. You want to be a better father. You want to be more effective, efficient worker. So get Stephen Pressfield's stuff and um, – Spartan Up, and I also, uh, Winners Never Cheat. Holy cow, that book is just, it's like just from reading the forward, you get just blown away. You want to be better at everything you do. It's just awesome. So, uh, and with regards to reading, I always say you got to read at least two pages a day. And that's simple. That takes you a few minutes, whether you want to do it in the morning, lunch, before you go to bed, up to you. That's 730 pages in a year. It's great. It's not, I'm, I read, uh, I read, I go back and reread books. I do a lot of books on audio. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> me too. I'm a, I'm a big podcast guy. Now. Yes. I love podcasts as well. And, uh, sometimes I feel like the, I like the question about gifting books because, uh, books can change people's lives. That's right why now. I think books are so important. I like, um, the four hour work week yep. by Tim. Yeah, that's ridiculous. No one, none of us are going to actually work four hours. 
but it is very good at giving you some um, some great ideas on how to be more efficient. So you could definitely trim down your hours. You know, if you really think about all the time that you waste and you really look at how you can become more efficient. And like, if you do, if you do read the book, like do the, do the uh, work. And at the end of every chapter, there's some uh, work to do and like really do, like I'm really doing it and applying it to my life. And um, like, for example, let me give you two, like two good ideas. Like, um, all right, you know, where I was doing a podcast once a week. Now what I do is pick one day a month and do all my podcasts. I'm done. You know, um, where I write a lot. Now I will choose a day and that's the day I will do like all my writing or like a lot of writing, you know, so then I just release it. So it frees me up. So now I've got more time on average for my son. And so um, having days that are for, ah, man, this is some good stuff. Uh, Having days where it's scheduled to do busy work. So that's the day you answer all your emails, do all the stuff that you don't like to do, you know, like knock that out. Then have a day where you um, have a creative day. And all you do is let your brain run wild with things you love. And then have another day set apart for like um, doing the good stuff, you know, like not, not, not creative, but doing the fun stuff you do. Like, for example, the writing, the podcast, that makes sense. The, but, you know, um, the, uh, did you ever read unique ability by Dan Sullivan? No. Well, our boys over at barbell shrugged, I don't think they were in the group, but I had just finished being in the group. It's called strategic coach. And um, for me, it was super refreshing to be in a group without a bunch of fitness coaches because every time I'd go to these seminars, it was fitness coaches and they were all kind of thinking the same way. So strategic coach, um, that's what they do. And I know the guys at Barbell Shrug talk about it. They, uh, bless you, they they break it up into essentially what you have, a a buffer day, which is uh, you're getting all your busy stuff done, your grocery store, laundry, or um, answering emails, returning phone calls. Focus day are the specific actions that are growing your business, putting money in the bank, that are doing the thing to build your business. Gary Vaynerchuk says uh, money is oxygen. Right. If you're losing money in your business, you, you can't breathe. And then they have free days, which means you don't touch or talk about business. So if it's your free day, You're not allowed to look at uh, or listen to a weightlifting podcast or read a bodybuilding book. You're getting your brain off of it the way you would give your body a rest. Yeah, focus, free, and buffer. Yeah. Yeah. I I just can't remember the days. Exactly. So uh, he, Dan Sullivan has a book out as well as he's got a podcast. You just Google his name. But unique ability is what you guys want to learn. And if you're truly serious, you know, their strategic coach program is something I did. Who's from Chicago here? Because they're in Chicago. Yeah, they're in Chicago. They're, uh, they have a couple uh, offices, but I went to the one in Chicago. So that stuff's powerful. And now speaking of uh, speaking of that, uh, listen, Dan Sullivan, his book, I think it's called Unique Ability. So that is a powerful awesome. book. Also, uh, now, besides that one, I'm reading um, – I, I do I, – all my books are on my iPad. So I have – like shepherding a child's heart. I mean, that's more like it's a Christian book for like um, raising your child, raising your child. Like, you know, instead of just teaching them to do right and wrong, to, you know, it's about shepherding them to know why they do right and wrong. If you're Christian, like, you know, you're doing right because you want to glorify God. Um, and then the third book I, I'm reading right now. Well, I'm rereading. But do you guys, anybody here read Dan John? Oh, yeah. yeah. I love his uh, book. uh Never, Never let, let go. go. Yeah, uh, have it right there. That book was so inspiring. I know because he keeps stories. so simple stories. Tells some stories and gives you some really cool ideas to, to apply to your training. And he gets you back to like you know the 70s. keeping it real. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Like we try to get way too complicated. True. You know, even when you read like uh, you read a book like Super Training, like I've read that. Like you read it and you're like you can barely get through it. But then when you get through it, you're like, oh, it's not that hard. Like, once you figure it out, you're like, man, you could have said that way simpler. You could have said, like, you know, beat the crap out of somebody, make them adapt, and back off. In the book. I just told you super training. So, like, um, you know. Save a lot of pages. Yeah, save a lot. So, um, sometimes people in general, like, that's their thing. They like to be 
scientific, complicated. I the way Dan John writes is so real world, experiential, yeah. applicable. To me, I think I like to learn that way. That's why I love uh, Louis Simmons always when he would write articles. It was always a story about a lifter who did X, Y, Z, A, B, C. So that helped me learn a lot. Um, the book now that I'm uh, remembering that I was telling about is called Spiritual Awakening. I think it's Tom Brown. And uh, I'm reading the beginning and it's, it's intense. And a friend of mine recommended it to me. And uh, it's like, it's just intense. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so I'm um, reading the thing. It's just making me think a lot deeper about, sounds nuts, but like the, the meaning of life and, and life in general. And just the, it's like, I don't, I don't know if it's. I, I'm with you. Like, you start getting older, you just start, you're not always thinking about deadlifts, I guess. <laughs> no, no, you're just thinking about, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but like, I think a lot about like, um, and I recommend you all do this. What I'm about to say is like, think about, it's sad. At first, it's going to sound crazy, but hear me out. Think about when you're on your deathbed, you know, and you're hopefully, I, I mean, I see my son is with me and my daughter and my wife and my friends and family and, you know, they're saying goodbye and it's cool. Like, I'm not afraid of that. And then what do you want to be saying to them? Like, I want to look at my son personally, my daughter and my wife and be like, you know, guys, don't sweat it because I did or tried to do everything I set out or wanted to do. What I will not say, and I promise you this, my mom and friends and family will all agree. I will never talk about should have, could have, and would have. Because if there was something that I had in my mind, I gave it 110%. And either it worked out or it didn't. But it didn't work out because I didn't try. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's all you want is that you want to, like, have tried whatever it is and taken it as far as you could. And then at the end of the day, the results, that doesn't really matter. Uh, becoming a world champion powerlifter was irrelevant. It's the fact that I was doing everything I could to become it. Now, it was kind of cool to win, no doubt. But, you know, it's all about, like, whatever it is you set out to do, you do 110% to do that thing. And then at the end of it all, you can look back and say, man, I did it. I, I tried. That's perfect. I, I think that you should, you know, just talking, piggybacking on books, just feed and fuel your brain with inspiration. And sometimes you can't do that with the people around you for whatever reason. They're negative, lack mindset, scarcity mindset. They hold you back. Then you got to read books. You got to listen to podcasts. You got to, that's how you surround yourself in the beginning through technology. And then what's weird is some of you might become very close friends. Like you meet your closest friends through that connection of the iron, the barbell, um, so I'm always inspired by so many things, but reading is uh, so like peaceful for the mind. Reading and, and writing, writing down what you want to do, and that's important too. Let's take another question. Currently, you're going to make the transition from a commercial gym. To talk, phone please talk. Right, re repeat. Start okay. over. Talk in the microphone. Okay. Currently going to make the transition from a commercial gym to my own space in the next couple of months. Good for you. Thank you. Uh, looking for maybe some ideas to, I've got an existing clientele, of course, but maybe an initial boost, whether it's, you know, whether it's a free seminar or a weekend workout or if it's a Lots price decrease or, you know, some ideas to generate. You don't do a price decrease, you know, like, you know, like I would personally do, even though you got existing clientele, before I actually got into that space, I would do pre-sales, saying, pre I'm coming here, I'm opening it up, like, you know, um, put it out on Facebook. Um, Facebook is really cool because you can market and grow your Facebook page um, based on demographics. You can choose to, uh, you can pick zip codes to grow the, to grow the Facebook group. Facebook ads, Yeah, right? Facebook ads. Yeah. And so, and then I would say, I am pre-selling. You might want to, like, part of your day, set up a shop there for... I would do it for one, two, you know, whatever months it takes to like the second the doors are open, you have a good amount of revenue personally is what I would do. That's exactly what I was going to say. You do the pre-sale. And uh, what's interesting is <clears throat> commercial gyms been doing that since we were all kids, right? You probably remember like the health club that was opening up. They put a big banner outside and it was like pre-sale for the first 50 or pre-sale until this date. But uh, strength coaches and warehouse gym and garage gym owners, they, they didn't want to go that route. They felt like that was wrong. 
But you, uh, like Gary Vaynerchuk saying, and Gary Vaynerchuk's important person to listen to in business, um, you know, money is oxygen. So uh, have a website, just a simple one-page website where you're collecting email addresses, and uh, you could get them to pay online. And I highly recommend the pre-sale. And the one thing that really helped me with just uh, my sanity was... Uh, using Wattify to manage my gym because I'm not a manager and that allowed us to manage our uh, soft, manage the membership in a real great way um, as well as uh, communicating with them through the newsletter. So let's say you're going to open up in three months. You do that three month pre-sale. You could do a, a different discount, a big one month one, medium month two, small the final month out, or you could just say the first 50 you do your Facebook ads for it. Um, but then, you know, uh, if you're in the warm weather area, once a month you do a meetup with the people that already signed up and you give them a free workout. And so you're building up the hype. You're emailing them body weight workouts to do at home. You're getting them hyped up about the gym that's opening. You're posting photos. So you want to build it up and have people ready to go versus the big, big mistake many passionate coaches do is – they fill up the gym with equipment, and then they open up the doors, and they're like, somebody, <laughs> I need to train somebody, and then they're bleeding, right? Are you, are you telling me that if you build it, they just won't come in your door? Nowadays, that won't happen. Back in the day, it would, but here's the thing nowadays. People are only, they spend time on their phone, and they're, you're a finger swipe away. They're swiping away. So they don't have time to really read what is the difference between mash elite and John Smith around the corner, and John Smith around the corner may not be a good coach, right? But he's closer, he's cheaper, that's what the parents saw, boom, they're going to go there. So we need to do other things to get them into the doors to experience the power of what you do. And that means it takes a lot more than just training people. You have to do sometimes things that maybe you're not super passionate about. You've got to create, you know, you could even have a podcast just for your gym leading up to the event and keep doing it. But you're, you're not just training people. A gym is, a, is another family. It's an extended family. So you've got to start doing that from day one and do the pre-sale. Agreed. Great question. Next Who else? What do we got? Next question. Come on, baby. Bring it on. Gabriel. Into the microphone. How did you all navigate the struggle, I guess the life struggle, between providing for your families financially and you know cultivating that family? Does that makes sense. Say it again. So, how did you all, I guess, split your time between spending time with your family and then doing the things that needed to be done? Oh, to provide and, for and provide for them. Why? That is a good question. I think that's something that, believe it or not, like we're still working on and talking about. And that's something, you know, as you grow, you just keep <clears throat> redefining. And, um, you know, I know now that with me, um, you know, we're both kind of in a place where we can make some decisions. At first, when we were starting a business, there was no de – the decision was made by I need to put money on the table, so I got to do what I got to do. Now we're at a place where I can pick and choose what I want to do, and uh, you know maybe I live simpler and uh, spend more time, which is what I'm choosing. And so uh, it's a it's a, it's a lifelong choice, bro. It's a good that's a great question, and um, I just know here's the one thing I'll tell you is when you're home, whenever that is, like so you know uh, Zach is more in the morning. I get to come home now in the evening. The moment I'm home, I am home. I'm going to be all in at home, just like I'm all in here. So cell phones away. Like I'm not taking phone calls. Um, what I do first when I get home is I get my son, get my wife, and we go for a walk on our farm. And you know, I defrag, you know, relax, calm down, start my time with my family. But, so, like Travis said, that will evolve. That will always change. Um, and when I it's just, I think um, you have to be very smart and strategic when you're wanting to do something you're passionate about and uh, the want versus need. So maybe you want to be all in as the entrepreneur, 
But uh, I wanted to do that too, but I couldn't because uh, when my daughter was born, my wife was still working. She would work at night. She worked a real tough shift, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, in a hospital that was like 45 minutes away. So I worked during the day. She worked at night. Two, she would usually do like two days in a row. Then she'd work a, a day a few days later. But I would teach during the day, then run my gym in the afternoon and evening. And um, I didn't leave teaching until my income from running my gym and my internet business. So my gym was open four or three hours a day. The internet was just kind of done in the morning on the lunch break. And at night, it was just done at odd hours. But my part-time entrepreneurial work um, was... It must have been double my uh, teaching salary. So I didn't just want to duplicate. I wanted to, uh, I didn't want to just uh, replace. I mean, I wanted to duplicate and beyond. I wanted to be super uh, dialed in with that because there's a lot of stress if you've got kids and you're trying to tell your wife or your wife telling your husband, hey, I'm leaving my job that pays a lot and gives us insurance and blah, 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 and I'm going to start this thing. You want, you want to start it, build it up, and make sure that you've uh, proven that you can be successful during uptime, downtime. Because there was, you know, a uh, economic uh, downfall around like 08, 09 with like the stock market and all that. And it negatively affected the way people looked at spending their money. That was just the bottom line. And your gym has to be able to thrive through those things. But there's so much more to running a business than just a gym. Uh, now, you know, like Travis said, we're reevaluating more things. So now I'm looking at more, okay, how can I change my business to be a better vehicle to live the lifestyle I want to live? So maybe my gym's not going to be open six days a week. When one of my uh, coaches left, he normally ran the gym Monday, Wednesday. I never opened up on Mondays again. I said, oh, well, I'm, I'd rather use that Monday to be with family or or I'm just not, I'm not going to do it. I have a buddy that runs a gym three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Then I think once a month he surprises them on Saturday. He could spend a lot of time with his wife. He's got a daughter. So you want to create a business that builds your lifestyle. Um, and I didn't always do that. And it's, it's uh, better and smarter to do that from the get-go than to go big and try to uh, tune, it, tune it up, dial it down. You want to be able to create, have these like structured things that you have the free days with the family. Um, and being an entrepreneur is stressful. It takes guts. It takes a lot of uh, character. You're going to be, you know, you're going to have tough times. Sometimes your feelings are going to be hurt where you're like, oh my God, I can't believe somebody would do that to me. And you, uh, it's, it's easier to just go out and get a job. I'll tell you that. And, but you've got to decide like, why are you put on this earth? You know, is this a hobby or is this something like, man, this is what I'm about and this is what I'm going to do. And, and when you decide what you're about and you, and you know your path, then you'll be all in. and You know you'll make it through the tough times, but you need knowledge of business. So you can't just keep getting better at training. You've got to learn business. You've got to start growing the business from the get-go. As soon as you have that idea, start building it, even if it's some part-time way. Just do it. Awesome. Next question. I think you guys all wrote down questions. Bring it on. To kind of uh, piggyback Gabriel's question, um, Trav, I know especially both of you guys um, head up multiple different projects, and I know he's got thousands of ideas all the time that's, you know, he's trying to come up with something new. <laughs> what is the... Your brain's going to explode. Seriously. <laughs> what, is your, what is your kind of, like, checklist to say, okay, even though I have all of this other stuff going on, I am going to run with this project. What you kind of go through to say, you know, this is what has to happen in order for me to start doing this. You know, I, I honestly go by, um, and this is not, I don't know how wise this is, but it seems to work for me. But like, I have, like, I can show you guys like a list of ideas. Like uh, if you go to my notes section on my iPhone or my computer, like if you actually, if you search uh, ideas, there are like a thousand different pages will come up of like, ideas and what happens it's like the idea i have where it's like aha moment like i um identify um i'm about to tell you what being an entrepreneur is all about right now 
like you identify a need and then you have all of a sudden found not just a solution, but a very unique and exciting solution. And you're super passionate about it. You have those three elements and you have an idea I'm about to do. For example, um, this new uh, mass, I have this mass mafia affiliate program program. It's not just the typical affiliate thing. What it is, it's like I've, just, I've identified a lot of business owners like you guys that have a business. Um, t t times are turning tough because there's a lot of competition out there. And so not only am I going to you know, say, hey, you can call yourself Mass Mafia, who cares? I don't care about that. It's just I'm going to actually give you this all the time. I want to help business owners succeed. I'm passionate about that. It's something um, – you know, I wish I'd had early on somebody like Zach to say, which I luckily I'm lucky because I was friends with guys like him. And so, you know, then him, Bible struck, like they've kind of held my hand along the way. So now I want to like hold your hand along the way and give you ideas. If things are going tough, you know, I'm going to give you new stuff to do to help your business and give you a group just like you to hang out with all the time and talk to. You. So, that's when I have an idea like that and I see this huge need or I see something I wish I'd had, then I'm doing that. No matter what I got to figure out, you know, I'm going to call my computer guy, Lauren, I'm like, Lauren, I want this up. Here's the date I want it up by. I give them, you know, I'm all about giving, um, what's that? Giving yourself Deadline. deadlines, giving myself a deadline, giving my, you know, my, um, partners deadlines. So you're held accountable. And then it's about that. My wife knows this. She knows when I get this look on my face, when I have this aha moment, it's about to go down. You know, like, I'm going to do this. And then I'm like, blinders on, I'm gone. You know, so if you can say those three things, there's a need, I have a unique, you know, answer, and I'm super passionate, and you need to do that. I would say that uh, people like us should have been working together earlier. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. When you could work together with people that you really mesh with, that is uh, very powerful because you build on one another's momentum. Um, like Travis said, you want to work in your unique ability. That's what uh, strategic coach Dan Sullivan talks a lot about. So you could have all these ideas, but which is the idea that truly inspires you, that you just want to do it all the time. It's the old cliche of, would you do it if nobody paid you to do it? That's like, great. Yeah. But, so true. But this thing is actually something you'll get paid to do. So if you spread yourself into too many different areas, then you're just good, maybe barely good. So you want to dial things in and have one or two or three things that you're really great at, very passionate about. And uh, like Travis said, it has to be a aha. It has to be an answer to many people's problems and uh, something that people are actually wanting. Um, you guys, we may have laughed when Zumba came out, but for a lot of people out there zumba was they wanted to dance it was great energy for them it answered a people wanted to get fit while dancing and you know so that's just one example i did that a little bit you did a little zumba yeah, I, <laughs> I thought i saw you on youtube oh dancing. man <laughs> i wasn't sure if that was you i didn't even I, want to say I was hoping that video was down but was <laughs> nothing is sacred on youtube just Seriously. letting you know you thought you deleted the video and it was already on somebody else's youtube account but um, what are you passionate about? I think a big mistake is to look at what everybody else does. Biggest mistake. Because it messes with your brain. You're like, wow, he's doing that. She's doing that. Is that the path I should be on? And uh, you don't want to do that. And that's a, a big reason why I don't follow too many other people. Uh, because I don't, I don't even want to see what they're doing. I don't even want to question if I'm on the right path. And if, if was that the way that they – that. I was supposed to move towards. I don't want that. I want to, you know, do what really, it just sounds, I want to do what makes me happy. You know. How I, simple is that? When <laughs> I was I was hanging out with Zach and the Barbell Shrug and several others last year in Miami. And um, it's when I first had my major aha moment. With, right. That um, was great. I saw that Barbell Shrug did a lot of online stuff and, you know, they were super cool. And um, like tonight, like if you have questions about what I do, I'll tell you exactly what I do. And so they, they were open and honest. And, um, and so I didn't want to copy them. So we're driving home. My wife uh, and I are talking. Because our goal was to come up with one new idea while we're there. And then the whole trip is more than pays for itself. 
And then we're coming back and she's talking about what they do. And I'm like, wait, I want to bring, you know, a coach like me to all those weightlifters out there that don't have coaches like me. So I'm starting an online team. And so that's when the first real true online weightlifting team was born. And then here's where people went wrong. A lot of people saw me doing real well. And all of a sudden I had hundreds of people I'm coaching online. So people tried to like start it because they're like, oh, he's making money. That's the wrong thing to do. Unless that's really what you're passionate about. Don't do it just because I'm doing well. I do well because I'm a great coach and I love doing it. And people can see that when they're with me online. You know, they had a bunch of people start right after me that have long since been gone. So do something because you want to give something new and creative to a cult, to a, a group of people that you want to be around. So, right, like when I was starting my business, I was saying I'm just going to train wrestlers, and you know, how many people said I'm an idiot. They're like, you idiot. There's like, there, that's the poor man's sport. There's no money. They don't want this. They're not going to pay for this. They're not into that. I was like, I just got, I'm, I'm like, I don't know what it is, but this is my calling. I want to work with wrestlers. And uh, my buddy who owns a wrestling club, I train his two kids. He's like, man, he's like, we got to uh, stop renting. We got to put our buildings together. He's like, there was 105 kids in the club last night, 105 wrestlers going at it. That's a lot of people. And, um, you know, they, they're hungry for that. And I am my most fired up. Like, I, when I go to Lehigh, I leave the house at uh, 5.45, so I wake up at 4.45, and uh, when I get there, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm crazy today, I'm freaking out on them, and uh, I'm like That's talking hard. out, and uh, at the awards <laughs> ceremony, the coaches were like, we don't know how you do it, how you bring all that energy, or what, you know, coffee you're drinking, or whatever, and it was the same thing when I was in Vermont at the Spartan camp. I took the kids out. We did a 6 a.m. Uh, morning workout, and I was, like, just flipping out. That's just how I am, going nuts. And uh, the guy comes out. He's like, you want me to get you some coffee? I was like, no, nah, I'm good. They're like, all right. <laughs> they were like, well, all right, all right. I was freaking out on the kids, getting all hyped up. And that's how you know you're in your element. You're, it's a time you're supposed to be tired or run down and beat up, but you're just, you know, you're just doing it. And I've always been passionate about training and, um, you know, they say, don't follow your passion, only follow what you're good at. Well, if you're passionate about something, you're going to find a way to get good at it. You're going to find a way to turn it into a business. And there's nothing wrong with turning stuff into a business. Don't you go out to eat dinner and don't you pay for it? Like, well, I don't, you know, but nobody complains about that. You go and buy clothes, you know, pe- everything is essentially some form of a business and if you're helping people and changing lives, then it's okay for it to be a business. It's okay. Good. I think we have time for one more question because um, – It's got to be the best question. No it's pressure. Five, it's 547. We got oh, here it is. It's like Joe, Josh, Josh, yeah. Josh, the twins. Joe has a beard. Joe has a beard and Josh has the better bench press. <laughs> is that, isn't that right or no? What happened over here before? Yeah, Who he benched beat, more? He beat me on that. Yeah. He did. You got to get a beer. Oh, you're better. I got to get a beer. Yeah. <laughs> beer drinks power. Yeah. Um, question about your uh, affiliation with Ultimate Warrior. Oh, I know man. that was uh, a pretty cool experience for you. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of us in here probably are, are fans of, of Warrior, uh, RIP Warrior. And, uh, you know, it's, his, uh, his take on life was, uh, was pretty intense and pretty encouraging. And uh, as someone who spent time with him, um, and, and I think you had a project that you're gonna, you were getting off the ground with him. Yeah. Um, what was one of the biggest lessons you learned from him and, and his take on life and lifting and, and pretty much everything in general and kind of what happened with the project that you guys were gonna do um, with the uh, Warrior, Warrior University? Right, so um, I did a uh, podcast with uh, somebody who, I mean, we got into this pretty deep and I cried and it was bad, so I'm not gonna cry again. But um, in a nutshell, um, his take on life is exactly what Travis and I are talking about. It's like, just love your family, be passionate, be a hard worker. He was a very much a, a simple man. He loved the simplicity. He loved the simple things in life. Um, he hated the internet. <laughs> he did not like all the, you know, just wasting time behind a computer. He didn't like that. Um, you know, they lived out in the mountain in New Mexico and, there would be times where we, when we would speak on the phone, 
it was like speaking to an old friend. It was like when you went to visit your friend in Texas, we talk about our kids. We talk about our family life. We talk about, you know, going to Disney world with the kids and talk about being creative and working hard and how we just spoke like, you know, two buddies. And I think, um, when he and I first, um, connected, it was when I had seen some of his, uh, his uh, injection of inspiration videos. I emailed him just telling him how I loved it. And I actually felt that was one of the first times I felt like, uh, it was okay to be intense. Like it, it felt okay. Like I was like, all right, it's, it's all right. Like there's somebody out there that is intense. So we connected in that way. And I feel like that is what he liked about me is that he saw that I was intense and passionate. And I think he was, had missed that for a long time. And, um, you know, long story short, because this story could be super long, um, we, we would talk and then he would, you know, we would lose communication because he really just, he liked the peaceful life. He didn't enjoy doing just all the, just the internet stuff and seeing everything on the internet. He just didn't really enjoy it. So he would go out and hike the uh, mountains of New Mexico and that was his, meditation it's a lot kind of like this book i'm reading of, of spiritual awakening and he told me some amazing things about how he used to meditate so intensely when he was in the wwf when he was a wrestler and how he had you know a million dollar home and he didn't even sleep in the home he slept out on the desert ground and uh so we spoke a lot really about life you know we spoke a little bit about training but the training always circled back to how it made you better at life how it made you tougher and um, what happened was uh, there was a video where they filmed of uh, him training like a, uh, a rock band, an up-and-coming rock band, who uh, had potential, but they were, you know, drinking and just their lives were not together. So uh, the way it was filmed, he didn't really like it um, because it, he felt it portrayed that, um, that the camera was dictating to him what to do. He never liked people telling him what to do. He stood up for what he believed in, you know, he fought for those things. So um, in this strange twist of fate, I was holding my uh, underground strength conference, the first conference for underground strength coaches. And he was coming to New Jersey the same weekend to uh, do a signing of some sort. So um, he emailed me. We would email a couple times a week, sometimes not for a week if he would disappear into the mountains or whatnot. And uh, so he emailed me saying that, listen, you know, I want to, uh, I've been approached by these TV shows to do, uh, or several TV uh, companies or shows, whatever, to do Warrior University. And uh, I want to do it with you. I will do the life and like the, uh, the life stuff and you'll do the training stuff about, I want us to be able to blend that together you break them down through the training and build them back up. And then I talk to them about how to apply it to their life. And he's like, you'll be the warrior beast coach. And every email after that, he emailed me. It wouldn't say Zach. It would say warrior beast coach or WBC. And he was really fired up about that stuff. Yeah, it was just, it was so, uh, we were getting really pumped for this. And uh, I said to him, I, he said, uh, if you do me that favor of, partnering with me, working with me, then uh, I'll speak at your conference if you'll have me there. So I said, uh, I said, you know, if as you'll have him. yeah, I said, uh, I said, you know, you ever have a friend where you just say, Hey, uh, John, can you just help me with this thing that I need? And your friend helps you. And then when the favor is done, your friend doesn't say, well, you owe me now. I said, that's how I prefer to be a friend. Like it doesn't have to be, I do this, you'll, you do that. I go, I'll help you any way you need. And if you want to speak at the conference, you could absolutely speak at the conference. So, um, when he spoke at the conference, he blew everybody away. I mean, it was amazing. And, uh, the next morning when was the first day of filming warrior university, um, it was uh, not good. You know, several things happened that went bad from the cameraman to his, our, uh, something happened with like his manager and, uh, things just really went, uh, the day was like, eh, it was just, it was a bit crazy. It was a bit of a whirlwind. Uh, and, uh, after that, uh, we just lost touch. 
And um, shortly after that, I think, is when he began working with the WWE, and we lost all communication. And, uh, you know, a couple of things I mentioned on the other podcast um, that I did where, you know, he had the membership website, and I helped advise him through it. I connected him with a web designer, and um, just he stopped communicating with people. So I paid that web designer for stuff that went unpaid for people were emailing me about how um, they're trying to cancel their membership, but they can't and it's still getting charged and it it just started going bad. And um, so I got angry and uh, probably said things to him that I shouldn't have, you know, in hindsight, you, you, you know, you get mad, you say shit when you're mad that you shouldn't say. Um, and that was like the tough thing. So, uh, I paid for some things that weren't unpaid for. And, um, you know, when he passed away, it was like tough because you were just waiting for that phone call. So we really never spoke. I think we, we may have spoke once after that warrior university filming. And, uh, some of those guys still stay in touch with me. I trained one of the guys actually, and he's made a dramatic change to his life. It's pretty cool. But uh, we never spoke, so we never, like, re, you know, like, when you argue with a friend, as anybody does, eventually you just, like, drop it and say, all right, that's over. Let's, like, let it go behind us. So we never got to that point. So many things were left unsaid, and then, you know, I communicated just very little bit with his wife, um, and she just said, you know, I can't tell you now why he stopped communicating Um, but he spoke about you all the time and he loved you like a son. And and she's like, maybe one day you will know. So, you know, I just kind of, you know, I use that as a lesson of like, even more of like, do what you want to do, say what you're going to say, what you got to say, because, uh, that cliche of tomorrow's never promised for you. So true. So warrior university did not come to fruition. It could have been better. We probably would have done another one if we could have communicated. Um, and then I did get reached out to by the, the guy or the team that did film that day. Um, I'm not sure who wanted to, but they wanted to kind of put that out. And uh, I said, well, I'm not going to uh, do any interview or anything unless Warrior's wife says, go ahead, Zach, you could do it. Um, but, you know, what I'm telling you here is, is really what happened and what I said on my uh, friend's podcast that's essentially how it happened. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's a shame the way all of that went. Um, but like any relationship, it takes time to make it, you know, better. And that's, you know, I guess my lesson from that is, is I try to share that lesson with other people of, uh, you know, you got to say something to somebody, you know, say something needs to be fixed, fix it. Um, if things are, are unfixable or you got to cut ties, then, then say that too. So, uh, warrior university was filmed once. And what's so interesting was this, uh, June will be three years. That will be, uh, it was like June 1st or something we filmed. And, uh, those guys are still, their lives were changed from like a two and a half hour workout. And, uh, when the workout was going on, I remember in the back of my head being so, uh, I was like, oh my God, this is getting, this is a little bit out of control. This is crazy. It just didn't look, it, I was having bad like visions of how Biggest Loser looked. People doing things that they shouldn't oh, be yeah. doing, you know, but he didn't care. Like, you know, that's what actually I think was, that's a, a flaw of mine is wanting, you know, this perfect technique, this and that. But when you're trying to change yourself, you have to be broken down to have a breakthrough. So he understood that more, and I think we didn't meet, you know, right in the middle on that. Um, So who knows if that footage will ever come out. And, um, you know, that was just such a crazy time because his manager, like, flew back to London. (laughs) It was like the one guy holding the camera was uh, super overweight, and, like, I don't don't know if he passed out. He just couldn't make it. So somebody else had to start carrying the camera. It just, it just kept like going through this downward crazy spiral. It was like a, it was like, is this really happening? The way the whole thing was going on, and um, and then ironically, Warrior went back to work with his manager, who left him, who uh, 
you know, did copyright infringement on YouTube. And then me and Warrior's manager got into it for the bad things I said about him. And uh, the way I left it with his manager was I was like, you know, what's interesting is you've made mistakes. You know, you left during a tough time when we needed you. You did copyright infringement on his own videos. And um, during an emotional time, we say the wrong things. So uh, I, that experience taught me to learn to forgive. You know, that's, I think, is, uh, I learned a lot from just, not just from him about, you know, life, but the experience of our time together and the experience of how it left off. And uh, I teach even my kids, I say to them, because now that they're getting older, especially my daughter, and, uh, you know, no offense to girls, but the girls get a little bit dramatic in the younger and and whatever ages. And uh, I always tell her, I go, you know, no matter what, like, don't, you know, walk with hate or anger in your heart. Like, there's no room in your heart for that. So if somebody's mean to you, maybe we don't know what's going on in their life. And uh, I use that stuff also for the athletes I train because uh, sometimes we think we know what's going on with them, but then you really learn that, man, there's some just brutally tough times going on in their family. So uh, I try to be more understanding through the past three years, try to be better from that. So I learned a lot from that. Unfortunately, we tend to learn these lessons through pain. You know, it would be so nice to not uh, have to go through painful times to learn great lessons. But, you know, that is, uh, I guess, the way uh, life and things like that work. So it was a was a, a, a unique time. And it was also really, you know, it was interesting. That was like the first time somebody with, you know, I don't know, if this is worded right, somebody with a big name really believed in what I was doing. You know, a lot of people see what I do and they see a guy training wrestlers. They see a guy holding, you know, the iPhone to his face. They see a guy who's always intense. They don't see how awesome the training is. They don't see the things that I do for kids that my coaches have learned to do for kids. They don't see that stuff they maybe give more props to the coach that's training a pro athlete or, I don't know, a celebrity. And uh, I got to tell you, like after so many years of putting in the work, it was almost like felt a refreshing, like good feeling that, wow, like somebody at the top believes in what you're doing. And now like it was just interesting, you know, it's just that interesting tough time. I think you will all go through a time like that where somebody's in your life, you don't quite grasp why they're there or what's going on. And you have to make sure that you, uh, you know, do all the things you want to do with that person or those people, you know? Um, I learned a lot from that. It's awesome. Well, we're going to have to wrap it up. Um, we're about to go do Chang Thai Saturday night. Crush some home. food. Crush some food. Zach, um, where we can the Barbell Life people reach you? I think uh, undergroundstrength.tv is the easiest way. And uh, if they just Google underground strength coach, they'll find a lot of uh, tons of free stuff. Oh, yeah. The Twitters, the Instagrams, the podcasts, everything. <laughs> One day, though, it'll, I always say it'll, it'll, uh, it'll all be gone. I'll just be in a cabin somewhere with uh, my wife and uh, gone. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. The peaceful life. You guys, the you guys can go to <laughs> matchlead.com, sign up for the newsletter. You can also uh, check me out for my upcoming seminars, matchlead.com. It's all there. And uh, you can uh, email me if you're interested in hosting one. Uh, that would be info at matchlead.com. Now, I know that sounds really big time info. I think it's going to go to this secretary I have. I'm my secretary, so it's really coming to me. <laughs> it just looks cool. It just looks cool. <laughs> Your info. Yeah, it's my info. So, But uh, check me out. My Instagram, Match League Performance, Facebook, Match League Performance. I'm so excited for today. It was awesome. Tomorrow's going to be better. But what I'm really pumped for is hanging out with you dudes tonight and girls, everybody. Awesome. So give yourselves a big hand for a great first day.